Today we are doing touch-up paint work with Colorite. Colorite's been in the OEM color matching and touch-up paint game in the automotive and motorcycle industry for a very long time. We've used them almost exclusively for matching our stock colored bikes and uh, it's worked very well for us in the past. I'm going to show you how you can do it at different levels for different scratches and chips on your bike today. As you can see here, this is a standard issue kind of scratch that you're going to be getting. Uh, I think it was probably from some sort of sharp instrument or who knows what happened to it. Anyways, it happened. Um, it needs to be fixed. So we're going to use some color right to do that. Uh, this chip happened by uh, probably a tool or something. Uh, this bike, the Daily Dyna, gets a lot of parts installed on it. It's a kind of our workhorse bike. It's getting all sorts of tools dropped on it or uh, parts dropped on it or whatever. And uh, we're going to try and fix this too. So no matter what kind of paint issue you have, Colorite has a solution size for you. Say you wanted to repaint a whole bike in OEM color, you can buy it in quartz. Uh, if you wanted to paint a fairing or something really quickly, they have spray paints. Uh, they also have smaller touch-up bottles, and they have even tinier bottles with shakers in them for small abrasions, rock chips, things like that. And finally, they even come in a paint pen. To start the process, you need to wash the surface, of course. Uh, that's going to clean everything. There's not going to be grease and grime on there. Uh, paint doesn't like to stick to stuff that can't be stuck to. So we're going to clean the surface with a little soap and water first on a rag. Just get in there, scrub it a little bit. Get really inside that scratch and then of course that nick as well. And we're going to let that dry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with a little grease and wax remover. It's a chemical that really does the job of getting in there and cleaning all that crap out of there, leaving a nice surface to work within. And you'll use a nice non-scratching towel to get that job all clean and dry before you move on to the next step. So now we're going to prep the surface for painting. Um, you can use on larger scratches 600 grit or on smaller stuff 1000 grit and then you just wipe it really just dab it a little bit scrub it in there just to get it set up so you can get it cleaned out and get the surface flat as possible. Next we use a wet towel and we wipe all the sand paper dust off and then using another soft cloth get it ready we're going to hit it with the grease and wax remover one more time to make sure it's all clean like i said before the paint won't stick to an unstickable surface you need to remember that with painting it's not the painting that's difficult but the preparation you got to make sure everything's clean you got to make sure everything's flat on the surface and you got to need to make sure that the paint will adhere now we're going to start with the color coat if this was a larger abrasion or crash damage or something like that we would use primer and take the first step with primer then the color coat then the clear coat but on these chips and things like that you really don't need to if they're not so deep um, so we're going to start with the color coat this is actually color matched almost perfectly to the silver on this bike. They have almost every color code for every single bike you can imagine, not just Harley Davidson's. So what we're gonna do is shake this up really well, make sure the color coat is mixed in with all the other good stuff in this, and we're gonna paint. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm a horrible painter. I am not good at this at all. I never have been. Uh, my touch-up stuff looks ridiculously horrible. So uh, I'm probably about the best person in the world to be doing this right now. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys at home are a lot better at this than I. I'm not patient. I'm not, uh, I don't like to watch paint dry. So uh, let's see how this goes, okay? 
what we're going to do is take a little dab, put it out here, get the brush a little bit less paint on this thing, and I'm just going to dab it right here. Dab a tiny bit more, and I'm going to wait. Because under the rules of Colorite, you don't want to put a bunch of paint on there because it actually, if you put a bunch of paint and then clear it, it leaves it darker. So you want to just put enough paint on there to fill it and it'll color match perfectly. Here's a spot that we didn't do any sort of prep to and I'm still going to put some paint on it and see what happens. It says one even coat. We have now allowed this paint to dry about eight minutes. They say between five and 10, so we split the difference. And uh, we're gonna add a little bit more. So we let the paint set for almost an hour, and now we're gonna add the clear coat. First, we mix the clear coat up in its vessel, making sure that everything mixes together. Now with the clear coat nice and shaken up, we are going to dress these wounds. Now that we've applied the clear coat, we are going to let it sit for five or ten minutes, and then we're going to add a second thin coat of clear as well. We waited 10 minutes for the first coat of clear to dry and now we are putting the second one on. So we let the second clear coat dry and the results are pretty damn good even for a horrible painter like me. Uh, take a close up of this and uh, check it out. Even being a complete novice at paintwork, I'm very pleased with the results of the Colorite color matching system. Colorite, available in the can or the bottle, just like your favorite beer. Go get some. Colorite.com.